it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Matt Trowbridge. I'm an associate professor at University of Virginia. And I'm going to be talking today about a kind of early experience um, that was student-inspired and still very much student-led that the students have come to start calling Reboot Healthcare uh, at UVA. And um, this work is basically premised around one assertion that I think is really just truth. I think particularly, I think this audience would agree. But the grand challenges of healthcare are fundamentally and rapidly changing. And so what do I mean by that? Well, there's lots of examples, but some of the ones that have really been, uh, in my mind recently, have been things like a realization that the, the model over the last 100 years about healthcare data has all been based around uh, one assumption, which is that the only healthcare data that are produced occur during a, a, a physical exam of, of a physician. Well, with an Apple Watch or whatever, that's the tip of the iceberg. Just in 2016, that is obviously incredibly not true and, it, and becoming in, um, remarkably untrue as in the years to come. What does that mean for future clinical practice? You know, disruptive tech, uh, discoveries, um, genomics, the microbiome, uh, these are real. They're <coughs> overwhelming, though, to consider in terms of what they will mean in terms of clinical practice. Like the face of what it means to be a doctor are going to be fundamentally disrupted by these types of discoveries. How are we going to manage that, uh, that changing role? And then finally, systems issues. I mean, some of the biggest epidemics of our time are what people would refer to as wicked problems. Things like childhood obesity and so forth are not going to be solved through a vaccine approach. They really are systems issues, and we have to start thinking that way. And that is also, again, going to be part of this changing physician role and changing healthcare role going forward. So the problem, of course, is what I'm arguing and I, what we're arguing at UVA and on this panel is that medical education really hasn't kept pace with that change. And I'm here to assert or, and explore with this group, and what we're trying to explore is it, can human-centered design help? Is it a necessary new competency for future physicians? And what do we mean by that? Well, if you think about those grand challenges and the way they're changing, what you really are starting to think about, in the way we've given medical students for 100 years a structured approach to physical exam, I think we need to give them a structured approach to things like creativity, leadership, empowerment, so that they're actually equipped to manage this change be part of it and not fight change, and also we're a relevant lead change. So what we've given ourselves as a challenge at UVA is an idea of how might we integrate human-centered design into medical education, which, as we heard from talks like Susanna Fox yesterday, within a traditional and uh, conservative institution like med education, that's its own design challenge <laughs> and uh, something that shouldn't be taken lightly, be and because change is actually intentionally slow because it matters and you have to do it right. So we're exploring this. The cool part is, and I, I, we, my uh, co-instructor and director, David Chen, and I came to MedX last year, and I think one of the things we really took away from MedX and from design thinking in general is, if you have a question like that that you don't know the answer to, a really good way to get started is just to try it <laughs> and to prototype it. So in September of 2015, I attended MedX last year uh, on September whatever the, the day right after last year's MedEx was, I called up the curriculum committee and said, would you let us do a program uh, for human-centered design starting with the incoming med students this next year? And to their credit, they said yes, and they gave us a small amount of money to try this out. So basically, in October 2015, <laughs> 10 uh, students from UVA, these are real live UVA students, and they really deserve a lot of credit, said yes, I will participate Above my normal and required medical education requirements, I say yes to meeting with these crazy physician doctor uh, teachers once a month. I'll give you a lot of my time, which is the most valuable commodity that a med student has, because I believe this is actually important and will help me make, you know, be part of not just my, my own career, but figuring out what med education might be in the future. What do we do with these guys? And what did, what did they help us learn as well? Well, we did all the classic design thinking things. We basically went into, we asked for the key to the uh, quality improvement team at UVA and said, what are your top five true north issues? And, they, and then I just said to the students, choose two. 
and we took inpatient falls and we did all the things you're supposed to do. We, we walked, the, the students shadowed occupational therapists. We did all, we borrowed a Susanna's uh, uh, thing I saw about in her blog about uh, you know, putting one high heel on one foot and a wobbly sole on the other and then try to navigate with a walker and an IV pole and the students learned a lot. We thought, uh, this is our head, one of the heads of quality improvement at UVA, Paul Helgerson, and he helped us uh, take on the issue of readmissions by having the students, giving the students opportunities to interview some of the high utilizers at UVA. And the students came back with these remarkable insights that actually really did shift the thinking of the quality improvement team. So the cool part is it was a success, at least enough that now we get to do class number two. So uh, we just uh, recruited our second class, and now the uh, Alumni Association at UVA Jefferson Trust has given us funding, and we now have 15 new students just getting started. Of course, with that, it doesn't, I don't know exactly what happens in 2017 or 2018, because this, is, this really is the design challenge now. Okay, cool. But where, how does this integrate into formal medical education? How do we do it at UVA? How do we do it more broadly? And I think it's important to ask, is this the right model? Is this, it, these competencies, are, I think, are needed. Is design thinking the right one? Maybe. We're going to figure that out. So please join us at uvareboot.healthcare, and we'd love to hear your experiences. Thank you very much. All right.